I'm the enemy. Because I like to think. I like to read. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice. Lofty ideals, peace, justice, and respect for human rights. Words from the Charter of the United Nations, a UN that for decades has been mostly taught, until today. With the Cold War over, the UN is beginning to put muscle behind its words, plunging into the business of waging peace, becoming in effect a planetary police force. Warriors are agents of a new United Nations. Keep them down. A UN with muscle. Let's go! A UN which gave itself the right to interfere in a country's internal affairs. Because lots of people there were suffering, and that was reason enough. What's so special about this? Because for the first time, you have an intervention in favor of humanitarian aid. It has a moral value. An international rescue. Moral, yes. But when these planetary police stepped ashore here, they and the diplomats who sent them trampled the rules, violated the respect for borders and the idea of sovereignty that governed relations among the world's states until now. When you have thousands of people who have been killed, when you have starvation, buildings are demolished, kids are in danger. I believe that this represents a threat to peace and security. The key words are peace and security, words from the United Nations Charter. Action with respect to the threats of the peace, breaches of the peace, and acts of aggression. Article 39, the Security Council shall determine the existence of any threat to the peace, breach of the peace, or acts of aggression, and shall make recommendations or decide what measures shall be taken in accordance with Articles 41 and 42 to maintain and restore international peace and security. They can come into a nation on the threat to the peace or any breach of the peace. Article 42 and Article 41, these may include complete or partial interruption of economic relations and of rail, sea, air, postal, telegraphic, radio, and other means of communications, and a severance of diplomatic relations. Should the Security Council consider these measures provided in Article 41 to be inadequate, or have proved to be inadequate, it may take such action by air, sea, or land forces as may be necessary 
to maintain or restore international peace and security. Such actions may include demonstrations, blockades, and other operations by air, sea, or land forces of members of the United Nations. Now, these can be applied against the United States as well if the American people decide they don't want to go along with this. Remember the phrase, ordo ab chao, out of crisis order. There is to be, according to the occult, one last great crisis culminating in World War III, which is the false Armageddon. This war is very, very important that you understand what it is to do. According to the Bible, prophets, the world is to be brought into a crisis state, and this war is, according to the implications anyway, totally nuclear. It will be a very short duration war, and the primary emphasis of this war is the elimination of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. That has never occurred. That prophecy is yet future. Out of this great armed conflict in which Israel and Syria and possibly Russia and other Arab nations are involved comes a tremendous change in human consciousness. Man is basically spiritual in nature, but man is also apostate from the scripture. As a punishment from God, when mankind's level of consciousness is raised to the spiritual level and he begins to understand what war can actually do to his species, he embraces what the Bible calls a false messiah, an antichrist. This is a punishment for the rejection of Jesus Christ, who claimed that the human race could do nothing without him because their hearts were evil and they needed to have a new heart put within them, and that came uh, by rebirth, said Jesus. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born again. Now, the vast majority of Americans, and particularly the American Christians, have utterly rejected the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and they have brought in a new gospel. And thus, they too are going to go under this deception, and you can already see it happening. But basically, uh, this war, which uh, CIA here feels is not very far away, will do a tremendous amount of damage, and out of that crisis will come a powerful United Nations that will have its way. It says, and at that day, the day of this war, shall a man look to his maker. It's going to be that powerful, that great a war. And out of that crisis will come a powerful United Nations that will have its way. It says, and at that day, the day of this war, shall a man look to his maker. It's going to be that powerful, that great a war, that man will actually drop everything and will look to his creator. Because he does not know his creator, because he has rejected the Bible, God has determined that he shall give him a substitute, and that substitute, the Antichrist, will lead the vast majority of mankind into eternal ruin. This great final conflict is there uh, only to bring man to the point of destruction. And his eyes shall have respect for the Holy One of Israel. brought forth out of the nation. 
Egyptians. And they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a star. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands. And many people with thee, O God. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without Sisyphus, world government, world economy, a new world religion. Basically, it was to pit communism against the Christian West, destroy both Christianity and communism, and out of the ruins would come Luciferianism, the new world religion, and the new globalist agenda. So, you see, it's been going on for a long time. World citizens seek funds for a spiritual UN. One world, 92. Uh, this has been going on for quite a long while, and they have been working very hard to bring this agenda to pass, a declaration of interdependence signed by many of our uh, senators and congressmen. Beyond national sovereignty, there's a picture of the United Nations. This is a Baha'i faith uh, operation. World peace through a new world order. They mean business. The United Nations Social Agenda 7. 1994, International Year of the Family. 1994, International Conference on Population and Development. 1995, World Summit for Social Development. Drug Control. Crime Prevention. They're going to use drugs and crime for a lot of what they do. The U.N. is also grabbing land. Here is the Mount Mitchell State Park, North Carolina, that is now a United Nations Biosphere Reserve. A world parliament working under the Constitution for the Federation Earth. Plan for the Earth Financial Credit Corporation. The key to a new economic world order. A constitution for the Federation of Earth. World democracy, the rational alternative. The secret destiny of America. In America shall be erected a shrine to universal truth. And here arises the global democratic commonwealth, that's the United Nations, the true wealth of all mankind which is designed in the foundation that men shall abide together in peace and shall devote their energies to the common cause of discovery. The power of man lies in his dreams, his visions, and his ideals. 
Now, this is total blasphemy against the Scripture, which claims that man is evil and really does not have any ideals that are worthy of anything according to God. And so you have your basic Antichrist stance, the great university of the six days. Work must be built here in our Western world to become a guide unto the nations. About this shrine to universal truth shall rise a democratic commonwealth, the wealth of all mankind. This is the destiny for which we were brought into being, the plan which was devised in secrecy long ago and in far places shall be fulfilled openly as the greatest wonder born out of time. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. We believe here at CIA that the United States of America is going to come under a severe attack, probably nuclear. We will emerge from that attack. It will occur during World War III. But we will emerge victorious, and out of that emerging will come a beast power unlike anything ever seen on planet Earth. And so you see, ladies and gentlemen, the New World Order, the International Organization of International Law and International Cooperation, has been around for a long time. It has been being built very slowly, very deliberately, and very quietly. The powers that be, the hidden powers, the powers of finance, are working behind the scenes, and that is why it does not matter who you elect to office. It doesn't matter if you elect a so-called conservative Republican or a liberal Democrat. The agenda for the New World Order marches on, and it is not slowed down by any elections or by any complaints of the people. And the reason is it's run by finances and the power of finance and not by vote. And so, therefore, the will of the people means nothing to these people. The hidden rulers do not care what you think or what your wife thinks or your husband thinks or your families think. They do not care what the people of the United States think even collectively. They have decided, because of their greed, that they are going to produce a new world order, and they are going to do it irrespective of the cost in human life, human suffering, and this is exactly what the Bible said would happen. Antichrist is, uh, appears as being very benevolent, as being very good, as being very ethical and moral and upright and even perhaps Christian, but he is diabolically evil and it is a deception. If you have a global government, you also need a military force to police the world. The UN force is military. It might be argued, says Iron Mountain, that a well-armed international police force operating under the authority of such a supranational court uh, could serve the purpose, political and omnipresent, virtually omnipotent international police force and established in, uh, in an extraterrestrial menace, which we will get to later. But the basic one we want to look at now is the omnipresent, uh, virtually omnipotent international police force. And in the document, the United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World, we will find mention of that very thing, the establishment of a permanent international peace force within the United Nations. And it is to be the U.S., uh, U.N., rather, peace force, those required to maintain international order. That's what it's for. The peacekeeping capabilities of the United Nations would be sufficiently strong and the obligations of all states under such arrangements sufficiently far-reaching as to assure peace and the just settlement of differences in a disarmed world. It is designed to keep the peace. During Stage 2, states shall develop further the peacekeeping processes of the United Nations to the end that the United Nations can effectively, in Stage 3, deter or suppress any threat or use of uh, violate, uh, violence. Uh, the United Nations can deter any threat or use of force. In other words, they're going to bring it up to absolute power, omnipresent, omnipotent, total power. Who can make war with the beast, the Bible says. And as we showed you before, 
the U.S. Uh, three-stage disarmament plan very clearly shows the, the United States being disarmed totally, uh, only to the point of internal security forces, while the United Nations peacekeeping machinery is brought up to global scale to such a degree that even the United States, with all its collective weapons and its citizens, could not fight the UN or its dictates. And that's what's dangerous about this thing. We have been sold out, ladies and gentlemen, by our senators, by our congressmen, by our elected officials, the, from the president right on down, are committing treason, high treason, against the Constitution of the United States and against its people. They do not care, unfortunately. Uh, they have in mind this thing, and it's going to occur, and God says that it's going to occur. We are not going to stop it. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't uh, help fight it. That doesn't mean we cannot stand against it. We are to be policed in the United States by Belgian, Irish, Russian, Colombian, and Venezuelan troops, and uh, Canada, Mongolian, German, and Russian troops. And here is a book called The United Nations Peace Force. This is all real. Nothing contained in the present charter shall authorize the United Nations to intervene in matters which are essentially within a domestic jurisdiction of any state, or shall require the members to submit such matters to settlement under the present charter. But this principle shall not prejudice the application of enforcement measures under Chapter 7, and that means they can come in whenever they feel like it. Action with respect to threats to the peace, breaches of the peace, and acts of aggression. Here's an old headline, 1961, U.S. to propose end of national armies. Plan for the U.N. Peace Force ready to be submitted at Geneva. And in that plan, here is the United States again, and these are the foreign police that are supposed to uh, police us. Uh, this is a bill before Congress uh, to hire former Royal Hong Kong police officers into federal law enforcement positions to recruit and hire former Royal Hong Kong police forces, uh, uh, officers rather, into uh, police positions. This has to do with the International Police Force, the creation of a standing international military force under the United Nations Charter. Whereas under Article 43 of the United Nations Charter, the Secretary General is authorized to negotiate agreements for the creation of a multinational standing military force to be used for peacekeeping and peace enforcement. This is real. This has all been passed quietly in Congress and the Senate, whereas the United States should be take a leadership role in the creation of a multinational peacekeeping force so that the burdens of maintaining uh, international security are more equitably shared. You see, this is what they intend to do. They have already uh, stated that they support the creation of a United Nations Rapid Deployment Force. All right, now here's another bill called S-1581 uh, to establish a federal rapid deployment force. This is all being done right under the noses of the American Christian and the American Christian prophetic scholar in the church, and they aren't saying a word about it. It's because they are so apostate, they wouldn't see evil even if it stared them in the face. All right, here is a letter. Multi-Jurisdictional Task Force. And it also uh, deals with FinCEN, a modern urban military. Terrorism unrest closer to home, likely to transfer, uh, transform the armed forces. You want to be able to limit the level of violence to achieve an instant calming effect on the community. And that is quite different from the military's traditional approach to combat. The Defense Department is like a monster left over from the Cold War. It will melt away, and what is left will look more like a police organization. That's the goal, is an all-powerful, omnipotent police force. And what you're looking at with the MJTF and these other uh, combinations, uh, they're blending the police functions and the military together to form the internal security forces. And we are going to see this happen. It's happening very fast now. The National Guard is getting more training 
in law enforcement activities. They're also getting training in arrest, transference, and detention of uh, civilians. The merging of the civil police forces with the military is the first major step in the formation of a dictatorship. U.S. martial law plans revealed. Oliver North made plans to call martial law. Reagan, there was a big backer of secret cable splicer war games. That's FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency. National Police Corps formation. Federal force proposed. They're using drugs as the excuse, but what it really is, is to form the most powerful police entities that the world has ever seen so that they can totally control the world. It's happening. Soviet cadets are coming over to the United States and being trained by our own police departments. The trip was arranged by Kern County Sheriff's Deputy Bill Flower, founder and director of the Soviet American Police Exchange Program, now in its third year. The Bible said they would do this. How to make an arrest about search and seizure laws and enforcement techniques. They mean business, folks. This is real. Uh, Ten high-ranking Soviet military men from Leningrad and Moscow will uh, arrive in Bakersfield the day before Easter for a 10-day visit with American counterparts. Kansas to train Russian cops. Finney announces she promised Russians help in setting up local police agencies. This is all part of the agenda of Iron Mountain and Public Law 87297. I have your recent letter regarding your thoughts on our visiting Russian police and their training in Hutchinson. I appreciate your writing and sharing your concerns. There is currently a training program in Fort Riley, Kansas, whereby 87 international officers from 66 countries are participating. We have knowledge of a far higher number. There are literally thousands of UN troops being trained in America. We have pictures to show you of Russian military equipment being uh, brought in to the United States in accordance with Bible prophecy. This is exactly what God said would happen to the United States. Representatives in Washington said the German forces being trained in America included 1,000 at Fort Bliss in El Paso and 500 at Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita. The rest are scattered. A White House official speaking on condition of anonymity uh, confirmed the idea of stationing German troops on U.S. soil. Now, you see, this is what they have to do. But they're going to have cover stories about it so that you do not get concerned. But you had better get concerned, and you had better get concerned really fast. Russian officer uh, are coming. Crime bill mandates Chinese as fed police in the United States. This is all part of that whole operation. Russian cop takes taste of Arizona law. And so you see, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving towards a police state. And they're using the national epidemic of crime and violence, which they themselves uh, established, as their justification. That's how they do it. This is, was the plan of the Illuminati long ago. It's right in the protocols as to how they were going to do it. Now you say, well, the U.S. military would never do such a thing. You better guess again. Look at the Department of Defense and look at the amount of people who are CFR members. Council on Foreign Relations. Even your allied supreme commanders. All CFR members. The last true loyalist to the Constitution of the United States in our U.S. military was General Douglas MacArthur, and he was fired by President Truman. MacArthur knew what was going on. It's in his writings. He suspected that there was major trouble developing, and he tried to warn the American people, but the American people would not pay any attention to what he had to say. And because they would not, they are now going to go into slavery. And if you do not like the idea of slavery, your alternative is death. Look at your secretaries of defense. Council on Foreign Relations or Trilateral Commission. Clinton 
CFR, TC, and a Bilderberg. All the leading people in the administration. Al Gore is the only non-member. William Christopher, CFR, Secretary of State. Les Aspen, of course, he's no longer there. Colin Powell was CFR. David Rockefeller is the chairman, honorary chairman. Peter Peterson, chairman of Council on Foreign Relations. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Where do the rulers take counsel together? Where do the rulers of the world come and meet? They meet at the United Nations. They all come to the United Nations, and there they meet and plan their activities. The Bible says they all come to America Babylon. They come to the seat of Baal, the fourth beast, Lucifer's beast, and shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and shall break it in pieces. Now the word diverse means it's not a kingdom or a nation. The UN is in reality a treaty power, it is different than any entity ever created. It is an organization, and it derives its power from treaty. The United Nations is to be brought up to full global power with an army so powerful that nobody can fight against it. The United Nations will break the pieces, uh, break the world uh, into uh, little pieces, and it's done under Article 52 called regionalism. In fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy, in fact, they're doing the process of doing that right now. Nothing in the present charter precludes the existence of regional arrangements or agencies for dealing with such matters relating to the maintenance of international peace. You see, there it all is. And we have ten world regions. There's a map of the regions. This was divided up by the Club of Rome. But the, the Club of Rome is, of course, a... United Nations entity. It's a United Nations front. America is number one because America is Babylon the Great, and that's where Lucifer will rule from. He will rule from the great city, New York City. And so we go into world regions, and then we break down into national regions. And what is really going on is we are moving from elected officials to appointed officials for the centralization of power. They are nothing more than bureaucrats who are appointed, and you have nothing to say over who gets elected, and that's becoming more and more evident in the United States as we journey down this final uh, last time. And as you go down further into the counties even, they are subdivided into their respective county regions, and each one of those has got a grid overlay. This is done by satellite, and there is a reason for it. So they can pinpoint any place on Earth. They can target any place on Earth for laser weaponry retribution. If you think that's far-fetched, as we go into this program more, we're going to show you the absolute evidence and the proof of it from U.S. government films and documents. This is real. This is what they plan to do. It's being done through advanced technology. The control of the beast power of the of Daniel, the United Nations, is done through advanced technology. They're doing it through satellites, through the placement of satellites in orbits, uh, and the spin-offs that are developed from it, as we're going to show you in further video footage as we get into this thing deeper and deeper. But essentially what they're doing is they're putting all these satellites in orbit that are capable of tracking everything that you do. It's called Project Mosaic. We'll show you the documentation for Project Mosaic. It's a super secret operation, or supposed to be, but people find out about these things. And it's very interesting how they named it, what they did.
Recently, NASA's Landsat 4 satellite, shown here just before its trip into space, was launched from the Western Test Range by a Delta rocket. This Landsat is the fourth in a series of NASA spacecraft designed to continuously collect accurate information on Earth's resources. More than 100 nations will make use of the information gathered by Landsat 4 in land use planning, mineral exploration, and agriculture. Landsat project scientist Dr. Vincent Solomonson described a new instrument on the satellite called the thematic mapper. In urban planning, the thematic mapper will be very effective. Features that were blurred or hazy over cities as viewed by the, the multispectral scanner on Landsats 1 through 3 will be seen much more clearly from the thematic mapper. And as a result, urban planners will be able to manage and monitor the spread of the urban sprawl into the surrounding countryside. The major receiving and processing facility for Landsat data is located at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. After completing its three-year mission, Landsat 4 is designed to be retrieved by the space shuttle. Okay, standing by for up to limit. Total surveillance ability means total control ability. They will be able to track every move that is made. You might say, well, that's ridiculous. They, they would not have uh, any reason to do that. Yes, they do have reasons. You don't realize what a dictatorship is unless you have spoken to those who have been in it. The tracking and the control of people is of, of paramount importance to a dictatorship. The United States is mapped and the grid matrix is laid out under UN directives under Articles 52 and 55, 53 in that area, the regionalization system. It's being done all over the United States, which is why a lot of people have had address changes recently. They're going under the new grid matrix system of the United Nations, and that's what it's for. Uh, And I guess we are uh, engaged in research, basic research, which relate to these aspects, which are covered by a CIA in the United States. This comment is a dramatic departure for the Soviets. It's the first admission by a Soviet leader that they are doing high-technology research on strategic defense systems, much like the SDI program in the U.S. The Soviet program has been underway for more than 20 years. The USSR's laser program, for example, dwarfs U.S. efforts, with over 10,000 scientists and engineers and more than half a dozen major facilities devoted to laser research. Unlike the U.S., the Soviets already have ground-based lasers that can damage satellites, and they could develop systems to use against ballistic missiles by the year 2000. They are also experimenting with exotic technologies like advanced kinetic energy, particle beam, and radio frequency as defenses against incoming ballistic missiles. With accurate mapping and with computer-controlled mirrors, lasers can be used with pinpoint accuracy to wipe out any target. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in sight of men. And we feel that the odds are that's laser weaponry. America is brought into the New World Order by a regions and regional government. We might know it as metro areas up here. That's part of the regionalization of America. Then uh, as the inspection for disarmament, they're going to go into zonal inspection, zonal uh, progressive zonal inspections is in reality regional inspections. So we are headed towards this police state. Here are some pictures that were sent to us by uh, a friend we have down in the New Orleans area of uh, Russian vehicles. And, and there are, we have had reports of over 1,500 now of Russian military vehicles of all types that are being brought into the United States and they include Russian gunship helicopters. Uh, we have some pictures of some of this. 
uh, that have been set up, and we are hoping to get more to pass on to people. This is really going on, folks. This is real. This is part of this uh, phase two of the disarmament process where Russian troops will be policing you and I. And we had a train carrying military equipment that derailed. We're getting reports all over the United States of military trains and a lot of military activity going on all over the United States. And it is U.N. military activity. In fact, the pictures that you saw, the person told us that inside the Bill of Ladings were the United Nations. So what we're doing actually is going from state control to federal control. And this leads to the federalization of our police, our security forces. And because we answer to the U.N., they are, in reality, U.N. internal security police forces. That's the whole object. That's why they're being federalized. It's called the MJTF Police, which means Multi-Jurisdictional Task Force. It's a national police force, but it's also a U.N. police force because they report indirectly to the United Nations. In previous reports to the Congress, I have made clear that the United States expects scrupulous compliance with its arms control treaty partners. For its part, the United States continues to take seriously its commitment to arms control agreements. You see, they, they were the leader of it. The MJTF police uh, removes all citizens from local, county, and state protections. That's what happened in Waco, Texas. That's what happened at the Randy Weaver situation in Ruby Ridge, Idaho. Those were local police, local sheriff operations, and they are being usurped by the federal people. All federal agency units, all National Guard units, state and local police, all come under this uh, national uh, multi-jurisdictional task force. And their mission is house-to-house -house search and seizure, separation and categorization of men, women, and children, and uh, detention facilities. Now, these maps have not been verified by us, but... Magic. Unfortunately, in some cases, about television. Now, you've got something you want to share here with you. Well, I, I, one of the things that I, I thought that I'd point out, too, <clears throat> is that I didn't realize this until I was reading this document, and I said, just to cover it with you, and carry so much is in pretty rather good shape. So the Health, Education, and Welfare Department uh, that was set up in our government, I didn't know was set up in, by law in cooperation with the United Nations World Health Organization. And but here in the World Health Organization, it says, quote, here's a principle of mental health now. Principles of mental health cannot be successfully furthered in any society unless there is progressive acceptance of the concept of world citizenship. In other words, if you do not accept this concept of world citizenship, you're not saying. You're not saying. If you don't believe wow. if you believe in God, you are not saying. And the other thing that's very interesting is this document is a court case over the creation of 10 dissident civilian camps in the United States. This sounds must be. Must. Well, well, what do they do with the Christians? Well, uh, they send them to them. Elmendorf, which is the largest of the concentration camps. By Siberia. And they put them in uh, uh, yeah. psychiatric ward exactly and treat them as though they were in pain. We right. now have 37 dissidents civilian camp in the United States. No people are in them yet, but we're drawing close to the year 1987. When or maybe it's going to be the money collapse situation that we talked about with the rainbow money that no one wants to discuss, and yet by law we're required to be in it before June of 80, or before the end of 85, presumably by June of 85, and no one ever bothers to discuss the fact that they've talked about a devaluation of 10 to 1, that for every $10 you bring into the bank, the bank's only going to give you one in return. I mean, that's, we're, that's proposed. Yeah, we're, this is supposed to be an uh, information aid. Where's the information? <laughs> Why don't we get it in advance of the event, mm. not after the event? Here's a couple of pictures, pictures right away, of the detention. Yeah, these are specially built. So the, what they've done is take an old military installation. This happened to be an old Indian reservation, and what they've done is upgrade them. Or well, modernize them. Well, they have been upgraded. They've got a new building there. Yeah, and 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 they've got a new building there
the Tantum thing? Oh, yeah. This is what the Tony Law case is all where? about. This is in, uh, oh, Reno, Oklahoma, by the way. Yeah. It was for taken. people who are, are, are just not going along with this, this plan. Yeah. Well, you plan. know, it, it's interesting because when you think about this, the Lord told us to be salt and light. But he also said that the scripture was what? A two-edged sword, right? Which means it has a tendency to cut into our society. It, it, it goes against our grain. It tells us things about us that we really don't want to confront or deal with. And I think that's what the Lord's trying to tell us. We've got a lot of things. We've got a cancer infection, you know, the church and us as people. And I think the Lord's saying, who are you? Are you my people or are you, are, are, are you some other, you know, person, uh, uh, some other spirit? And if that's the case, we need to come to grips with this kind of stuff. You know, I know that message is really rough. The scripture says, if the trumpet is not sounded with a two note, who will know to prepare for battle? So I think that's what we've got to do. We've got to stop dancing around these issues. We've got to stop saying, I love you and you love me. You know, that's the enemy's concept. All this touchy feely sensitivity programs of, you know, of, of uh, management by objectives that all the young kids have to go through. That's all that hand back to analysis. But what we've got to start doing is getting down to the hard line thing here and saying, hey, wait a minute, all that stuff's got to go. You know, it's just not part of the Lord's program. Mm-hmm. In 1965, the Office of Law Enforcement Assistance, OLEA, was under the Department of Justice in 1968. The Omnibus Crime Control Act came into being, which converted the OLEA to the LEAA, the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration. In 1971, the LEAA called for a regionalized police force. And the LEAA had very close ties to the communists. 1971 Advisory Commission on the Intergovernmental Relations Issue, uh, M67, called for special police task forces, a special multi county or interstate police force. That's why you're seeing them starting to merge now. It's all part of the plan. 1973, the LEAA again calls for the elimination uh, by a merger of small police forces, your small sheriff departments. All dictatorships have two common characteristics, general confiscation of guns in order to prevent internal rebellion and the establishment of a national police force to enforce the edicts of the dictator. Colonel Roberts wrote that. In 1979, President Carter issues Executive Order 12148, establishing the Federal Emergency Management Agency, known as FEMA. FEMA absorbs the LEAA and becomes the primary control organization for the internal security of the United States in an emergency. Very, very important function. FEMA is a very dangerous organization in its behind-the-scenes abilities. And there is uh, that document, Wintex Simex 83, Pressure Point 84, DOD, Rex 82 Bravo, Rex 84 Alpha, Helix 2, Rex Alpha, Night Train 84, Cable Splicer, Guard Plot were all martial law uh, simulated training programs for FEMA. And they all concern themselves with martial law. And you have to remember that the UN system is a martial law system for law enforcement. We don't have a constitution and a local sheriff or constable or your local city police. You're going to have. Uh, UN police forces. Under the executive orders, mandatory registration of all people, including babies and children in the United States at the United States Post Office. There are forms in every post office for this. Seizure of all transportation, public or private, cars, trucks, aircraft, complete control over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Seizure of all civilians and work brigades, which is forced labor. And they have the right to split up families as well. Reagan was elected to the presidency. He installed Louis Giafrida as head of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Giafrida was an old cold warrior from Reagan's California days whose specialty was suppression of unrest and dissent. Giafrida, North, and George Bush began to turn FEMA into an instrument of domestic anti-terrorism. Now, North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the 
continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, I must, I wondered, yeah, I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke the military, and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. Mental Health and World Citizenship, a statement prepared uh, back in 1948, says the principles of mental health cannot be successfully furthered in any society unless there is a progressive acceptance of the concept of world citizenship. And so what they're saying is if you do not believe in this new globalism, if you do not believe in world citizenship, there's something wrong with you. In fact, uh, this is true, and it's coming true in court. Uh, during a hearing to vacate the death penalty for a self-proclaimed white racial patriot, the court accepted the argument that he was suffering paranoid delusional disorder because he held to the theory that the U.S. government was under the influence of a conspiracy. Now, Alaska acquired, quite ominously, a one million acre site for its federal mental health program. Now, under the new regulations that are coming out, the new crime control bills, uh, federally owned land such as national parks, fish and wildlife refuges, Bureau of Land Management land, and National Forest Service land offer an excellent option to solve the problems of siting and zoning commonly faced by programs for neglected, abused, runaway, homeless, disturbed, at-risk, and delinquent children and teenagers. So this is very ominous indeed. Federal land and personnel administrating it offer great educational and personal development opportunities for our young people who offer in return significant work on the ecology and the promise of a planet-sensitive next generation. So here you're getting into your ecology situation, which is also being brought up. Wilderness settings provide the public security uh, from seriously delinquent, violent teenagers for whom constructive discipline and a challenging environment are proven effective correctional tools. Now, if they're going to do this for children, most of whom will be liquidated, by the way, under the New World Order, if they don't comply, uh, what are they going to do for adults? Another possible surrogate for the control of potential enemies of society is the reintroduction in some form of slavery for the control of potential enemies of society. Uh, anyone that therefore that does not agree with the new order is an enemy of society and is therefore subject to discipline. Detention centers and concentration camps, work camps are all associated with forced labor. And this goes hand in hand with the executive orders, seizure of all civilians and work brigades. That's that's uh, forced labor. That's slavery. This is exactly what they're talking about. This is for real, folks. They intend to do this. The second part of the attack is the use of crime and crime control 
to arrest citizens. That's why you're hearing all this uh, hoopla on the television programs. Under the new crime control bills, the definition of criminal acts becomes very broad. Even political protest or dissent can become a terrorist act. This allows the New World Order to arrest and detain those who resist to be charged with a crime. You have to be very, very careful. Uh, they're trying to muzzle everybody. They're trying to uh, get around free speech. These people are then sent to detention centers for slave labor or for liquidation, medical experiments, or whatever they have in mind. Aid and abet, an article uh, or a magazine sent out for a policeman, uh, even talks about this. The coming New World Order is implemented as planned. They will give you a new uniform. You will have a new boss. But their article here is on crime. The declaration adapted to this Congress, this was a U.N. Congress, that crime prevention and criminal justice should be considered in the context of economic development, political systems, social and control values, and social change, as well as that of the new international economic order. Member states should develop an effective capacity for the formulation and planning of criminal policy and all crime prevention policies should be coordinated with strategies for social, economic, political, and cultural development. See, they, they decide all of these issues, and then they force it upon you and I. That the United Nations has established a declaration and program of action on the establishment of a new international economic order. That the inclusion in crime prevention and criminal justice policies in the planning process can promote the equality of rights and social security, enhance the effectiveness of crime prevention, especially in such spheres as urbanization, industrialization, education, health, population growth and migration, housing, and social welfare. That due attention should be paid to crime prevention, including the role of youth in contemporary society. See, they're broadening crime. And the application of United Nations standards and norms. Now, that's socialism and state control of the means of production and distribution. That's what it means. He thinks to change times and laws, the Bible says of Antichrist. The prevention of crime should not be confined to common criminality, but address itself also to those acts which are especially harmful, economic crime, environmental offenses, apartheid, and offenses of comparable severity, impringing on the legal peace and internal security to an unusual extent. These would embrace crimes in which public and private institutions, organizations, and individuals may be directly or indirectly involved. And the Bible says, He shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into His hand until a time and times and a dividing of times, and that is three and a half years. That is why all these crime control bills are being worked on in the Senate and the Congress because they are broadening the definition of what it is to be a criminal so that this thing can become all-encompassing and protest, political protest, will become a crime. A bill to establish constitutional procedures for the imposition of a death penalty for terrorists. And you can be called a terrorist, uh, for example, in uh, protesting. It's very, very deadly what is going on in the Washington. And they know, I believe, we believe here at CIA, they know exactly what they're doing. I don't think this is, uh, according to the scripture, something they're not aware about. Uh, the scriptures would indicate that they do this deliberately and they know what they're doing. Here's your task force. Task force is established. State and local. You see, uh, state and local, Drug Enforcement Administration, FBI, Immigration, Naturalization Service, Customs, United States Marshals, 
law enforcement offices from the United States Park Police, Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management. This is your makeup for the new uh, MJTF Task Force Police. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all for. This is real. So they have every intention of doing it, and the Bible says they will do it. We're not uh, bringing this to you so that you fight it, although you should, uh, but you will go under it, according to the Bible. The MJTF police are the same as Hitler, very evil SS. And America's hidden rulers are following Hitler's agenda when he took over Germany. They're following it almost exactly. The gun control bills, etc., are almost word for word what Hitler wrote. The MJTF police will come on the FEMA during a planned national emergency. FEMA is linked to the U.S. military and to NATO. And here is their national emergency management system. This is right out of their own book. You see the executive office of the president. Go over there to the left. You'll see NATO, Canada, and Mexico interlock with the military functions of FEMA. This is their interface system. And, of course, it would have to if it is to uh, help out in times of national emergency. It's not that FEMA is necessarily, and the people in it are evil. That's not what we're saying. But we are saying that the organization of it could be very easily taken over, and we believe, that, uh, according to the Bible, that's exactly what they plan. In preparation for and response to a wartime conventional or nuclear attack, virtually, virtually all elements of the federal government become involved in FEMA's network of contact and coordination. In this context, the departments and independent agencies that have a role in peacetime emergencies take on new and additional responsibilities assigned to them by presidential executive orders. In your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is a federal point of contact for the emergency management programs in both peace and war. FEMA works directly with state and local governments and others uh, in this operation. Let's take a look at uh, how they're interconnected and some of the names you're going to see as we scan down this. Management Agency has comprehensive responsibilities for managing the civil aspects of emergencies affecting the United States. A correspondingly comprehensive mechanism of communications and information systems is required in order to perform those functions. Such a mechanism 
mechanism is being implemented by FEMA in the form of an integrated national emergency management system called NEMS that is capable of supporting the full range of information requirements in every phase and type of activity. FEMA is a focal point within the federal government for dealing with a wide spectrum of emergencies affecting the United States in peace and war. It has a central role in both domestic and national security emergencies, ranging from natural and technological disasters through wartime nuclear attack. statutory responsibilities with respect to these emergencies involve mitigation, prevention, risk reduction, and effects limitation. And that is the one we're going to focus on because FEMA is, uh, can be proven to be an intelligence gathering network uh, and could very easily target the centers to the New World Order. The Emergency Information Coordination Center the Alternate Emergency Information Coordinator Center located in Virginia, that's called Belt Weather, and that is a top secret underground complex with an entire secret government, standby government. They call it Continuity of Government, COG, a National Warning Center, and that is co-located with NORAD Combat Operations Center in Cheyenne Mountain Complex, Colorado Springs. have regional uh, centers located in the 10 FEMA regions corresponding to the Uniform Federal Regional Council cities, of which six regions have heart underground uh, centers. This is all part of the regionalization under the United Nations. It's all done by the same people. It's done by the rich men of the earth, of which we have shown you the Council on Foreign Relations is part of that makeup, as is the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergs, etc. Iron Mountain is one such center. In fact, it is spoken of in the Iron Mountain Report. We met all over the country, always at a different place, except for the first and last meetings, which were at Iron Mountain. Here's a map showing your Federal Emergency Management Agency splitters. Uh, these are your 10 federal regions and how they're actually divided up. This is right out of their own uh, NEMS book. Other important interfaces with the military forces include the North American Aerosp uh, Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The U.S. Readiness Command, located at MacDill Air Force Base. The current intelligence information uh, maintains contact with operation centers at the CIA the Defense Intelligence Agency, and the National Security Agency. That's where uh, Oliver North worked, the NSC, NSA. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan, in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, I most, I get may I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend 
invoke the military and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. If the president ordered a direct strike into Central America, which was to be codenamed Operation Night Train, we got the documents on it, that they would set up a concomitant domestic readiness exercise or war game scenario called Rex 84, the main rationale of which was to round up 400,000 undocumented Central American aliens within a two-week period of time and incarcerate them in 10 military detention camps. They rehearsed this, but of course, if you were rehearsing the rounding up of half a billion aliens, you have also rehearsed uh, the rounding up of a half a million critics of the uh, administration. that these kind of illegal operations will stop just by Holly North disappearing because uh, the motives to generate these kind of agendas are still there. And the powers that were collected in his name, his office, as far as I know, they are still there. In times of passion and in times of great fear, what to the uh, eyes of the person and the mind of a person in time of relative peace and stability seem impossible, become very real, very logical, very possible. That was taken from a video, that excerpt, uh, about the Iran uh, Contra affair. Yeah, it's probably one of the better videos on the market. But FEMA is definitely not involved so much in emergencies of natural causes, but in preparing the United States government for what appears to be a nuclear war. And it is our opinion here, based on scripture alone, that they know this war is coming because it's a planned war. Former Attorney General William French Smith complained to National Security Advisor Robert C. McFarland last year, this was years ago, that he was alarmed at FEMA's expansion of the definition of severe emergencies to encompass routine domestic law enforcement emergencies. Continuity of Government, COG, is a highly classified program designed to ensure that no matter who or what is incinerated in a nuclear war, the federal government will survive. It's very interesting that they have built all these underground facilities with uh, hospitals, medical supplies, and the people, the common people, have nothing and are laughed at when they attempt to do something. There is some speculation that COG is often used to hide secret military operations. In June 1983, Senate investigators were tipped off of a series of C-130 and C-149 cargo flights, or 141 cargo flights heading towards Texas. All the planes had been outfitted with uh, combat uh, troop seats. Yet when we asked for information, FEMA said it was COG and refused to discuss it. Not even the intelligence committees could find out what was going on. Is FEMA behind a lot of the uh, military? Takeover. A spotlight put out a small publication on FEMA and in the case of emergency. Uh, executive orders, Blueprint for Dictatorship, also is one of their publications. Now, an executive order is issued by the President of the United States. It does not go through the Senate or the Congress. He merely issues it. It's put in a federal register, and within 30 days, it has full effect of law, and nobody passes upon it. Now, that's fine, and he has some rights to do that, but not contrary to the Constitution of the United States. FEMA uh, developed national security emergency plans for the regulation of immigration, nationals of enemy countries, plans to implement laws for the control of persons entering or leaving the United States, uh, develop intergovernmental and interagency law enforcement plans and counterterrorism programs, 
to interdict and respond to terrorism incidents in the United States that may result in a national security emergency. To interdict and respond to terrorism incidents in the United States. Now, this is a key that they're beginning to use. Under the new Crime Control Act, particularly under the Crime Control Bill Number 8, which is now before the Congress, a protester can be charged with terrorism. And this paves the way for the government to declare all those who oppose the New World Order as terrorists and therefore imprison them because you will be a political dissenter. To develop law enforcement plans to respond to civil disturbances. These people know perfectly well there's going to be major disturbance when this thing finally comes in. So they, they want all bases covered by law. So that's their rationale. They will legally be able to do this. You don't think it's going to happen. This is exactly uh, the pre executive order issued by George Bush to quell the Los Angeles riots. L.A. went under martial law. Very few people understand what that means. But it means, in essence, that the Constitution in Los Angeles was totally suspended. And it says in there that units and members of the armed forces of the United States and federal law enforcement, uh, enforcement officers will be used to suppress the violence. In other words, it's they're federalizing everything. And that's what happens under martial law. And to restore law and orders. They can also call up members of the National Guard. That's a key point. The militarization the nation. They're putting it under military law. If Americans do not want the new world order and they resist, America will go under immediate martial law rather than through the stage program into a martial law system, which is what the UN is. Also included to coordinate all federal agencies assisting in the suppression of violence and the administration of justice. Martial law suspends the Constitution of the United States. The UN is to be brought up to full power and it will rule through martial law by a three-tier military martial law system. The first one we're going to actually look at is called FinCEN and uh, FinCEN from the data we can get it's not only a financial uh, controlling sector but it has to do with uh, other things. Their equipment is black, and there are reports of a multitude of black helicopters all over the United States. We get calls on it virtually every day from someone who's just had them flying over the house. The FAA says that the black paint schemes are used on helicopters by the Drug Enforcement Agency and the U.S. Army Special Operations.
black helicopters are a formidable weapon against civilian dissent. The movie Blue Thunder underscored this point very well. It's a very effective movie that uh, one should go down and rent if you have not seen it. It's very, very interesting how it was put together. It's about a helicopter and about all the uh, operations that can be conducted with it. about this special detail? Yeah, a lot of people are already looking forward to the Olympics out here. And for a few short weeks, the attention of the world is going to be focused on this town. And every nutcase and terrorist and uh, crazy with a pipe bomb and a cause is drooling about it already. And that's what this special detail is all about, the potential for catastrophe. We don't want any Munich massacres out here, Frank. Are you talking about crowd control from here? Give that man a cigar. The object is for our pilot to knock out the red dummies and the black cars. He shouldn't touch any of the others. You see, in a riot situation, we just want to get the bad guys and protect the innocents. Firepower wouldn't be used unless our worst case scenario came to pass like armed insurrection. That's an acceptable ratio. More than that, this, uh, this terminal here is hooked into every data bank that there is. Because of these copies, you can run the whole damn country. Watch this. Defeated my name, right? They got your whole life in here. Tactical helicopter offensive response. Offensive response. I told you it was cool. Lovely, lovely. Can you park it right here? I'll bring it around. I think I got something. Texas. It's Monday afternoon. We just got in last night. We're getting ready to be checked out on some helicopters here. Because we're part of the helicopter assault team. You see the different bureau birds here. In Waco, Texas, Helicopter City, getting ready to go out on an operation here. Yeah. Training mission. See another one of the birds getting ready to go. We're going up with an eight man team. Four people in each bird.
Over the next few hours, this remote part of Idaho took on the sounds and appearances of a war zone. Authorities claim they didn't know that 14-year-old Sam Weaver had been killed, but they have lost one of their own. Deputy U.S. Marshal William Deegan was dead, killed in the fury of gunshots. Weaver is charged with assault on a deputy United States Marshal. Harris is charged with murder in the first degree of a deputy United States Marshal. The Marshals called in the FBI, the National Guard, the Army, Air Force, State Police, and County Sheriff. The news media. It is unconstitutional to use the military against the American citizen. Linda Thompson made that point very well in her uh, Waco tapes. But the powers that be are totally disregarding any constitutional restraints. Title uh, 18, Section 1385, Crimes and Criminal Procedures, whoever except in cases and under circumstances expressly authorized by the Constitution or Act of Congress willfully uses any part of the Army or Air Force as a posse comitatus or otherwise to execute laws shall be fined not more than 10000 or imprisoned more than two years or both. That was absolutely violated in the Waco uh, situation, and there's videotape to absolutely prove it. You have to understand the big picture and why the people in Washington lie on a continuous basis. Uh, they have an agenda. If, uh, if they announced it to the American people, they would die. So they're not going to announce it. Title 10, Section 375, General Military Law, uh, to ensure that the provision of any assistance to any civilian law enforcement officials does not include or permit the use of armed force personnel. You see, under the United Nations, however, all such restrictions would be eliminated because the Constitution is suspended. It's a martial law system. Therefore, under FEMA or the United Nations, all restrictions are eliminated, and you cannot... Uh, you can't, you can't count on the Constitution because it's simply not going to be there. And we do have these uh, black helicopters being reported all over, and the assault upon the Constitution of the United States is what we're going to discuss next, and it's a major assault. Under the New World Order, the United Nations Charter is the supreme law of the land. All new constitutions of the nations submerged under the United Nations will be written to agree with all aspects of the UN Charter. It may be worded differently, but the basic principles will be in the UN Charter. And it's a Russian document. It's a Soviet Empire document. Here's one called the New States of America. It says there will be new states. And, of course, that's your regions. And they're going to uh, redefine the states under the regions. And the 21st century Constitution, uh, which is a new Constitution proposed, it says uh, to regulate the right of the people to keep and bear arms. You see, the tenth cause clause is a revision of the Second Amendment. It's not uh, a right that cannot be abridged, but it's a re they're taking it away, and they're going to regulate the right of the people to keep and bear arms. They're doing it for one reason, so you can't rebel. A disarmed people have no choice but to do as they're told. It does not matter how awful and how terrible the conditions get. You will do it. Constitution for a United Republics of America. No person shall bear arms or possess lethal weapons except police, members of the armed forces, or those licensed under law. You will find with every one of these constitutions. They are going after the Second Amendment. Under H.J. Uh, 438, they intend to suspend it altogether. The second article of the amendment to the Constitution of the United States is repealed. They want to take away, totally, your right to bear arms. They have to, you see. As long as the American people keep their arms and refuse, absolutely refuse to give them up, the New World Order is in serious trouble. 
And then the Constitution for a World. Listen to this. Chamber of Guardians. The control and use of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of the World will be assigned exclusively to a Chamber of Guardians under the chairmanship of the President. Now, this is a world president in his capacity of protector of the peace. Now, what all this means in high-sounding language is nothing more than slavery for everybody that's not part of the elite. The Chamber of Guardians, assisted by a general staff in an institute of technologies whose members it shall appoint, shall determine the technological and numerical levels that will be set as limits to the domestic militias of the single communities and states or unions thereof. Armed forces and the manufacture of armaments beyond those levels thus determined shall be reserved to the world government. You see how this works? A well-armed people cannot be controlled easily, so they have to get the guns. It doesn't matter what the excuse is. It doesn't matter if they go in and stir up trouble and kill a lot of people and hype it with media. They will do it to get the guns. An entire nation is at stake. A well-armed nation of free people would be difficult to conquer by direct assault. Look at what happened to the Soviets when they went into Afghanistan. As soon as they had weapons to fight back, the Soviets had to pull out. The Second Amendment is the Enforcer Amendment. That's what it's for. It's to enforce this whole situation. If you lose the Second Amendment, you've lost it all. It gives the right of the people to rise up and bear arms. That's what it means, to put down acts of high treason against the Constitution by their own government or any branch within the government. The people have the right to do that. That's what the Second Amendment is for. Uh, we'll get into that uh, a little bit later, but it's easily proved. The right of the Second Amendment is to secure a free state. And the key word there is free. You are to have the right to secure it. And that means if you have to use force, you use force to do it. Traitors get shot. Traitors die. And that's the way it is, and that's the way it was written. And that free state is our nation under our Constitution and the freedoms granted under our Bill of Rights. That's what the entire Second Amendment is for, is to protect your Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Now, these people in Washington know this. In order to submerge the United States under the U.N. requires us to give up our free state status. It requires us to abandon totally our Constitution. It totally annihilates the Bill of Rights. If the people can be convinced through media propaganda to give up their rights to keep and bear arms, the entire Constitution will be wiped out. And that's exactly why they're going after the Second Amendment rights. They have to get the guns. We keep repeating it, but it's absolutely a truth. They must get the guns. And the reason they have to is, is because the people, if they have uh, given up their weapons, they could no longer enforce their will upon the government. You see, under this system that we have, it's the people that control the government not the government controlling the people. And the government is now evil, and it's trying to turn the tables. Therefore, the primary thrust of the attack will be upon all gun rights. They're doing it slowly, bit by bit, but they're doing it. Because the media is controlled by the rich men, a huge attack will be mounted on crime and violence. The plan the president will announce tomorrow gives the go-ahead for aggressive police work it says is constitutional. As outlined by the attorney general, it calls for tenants to consent to searches without warrant as part of the lease for their apartment. It calls for stepped-up searches with warrant. 
and it calls for police to stop and frisk suspicious persons in and around public housing. The American Civil Liberties Union, whose lawsuit stopped the sweeps, wasn't satisfied. The suggestion that a provision in the lease potentially allows searches of the most personal and private portion of a person's apartment raises very grave constitutional concerns. But tenants were less concerned about the Constitution than they were about their safety. What good are my rights to me when I'm six feet under? April the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, we had a person killed every day. You could hear the children screaming and hollering from all the guns. If this plan survives any challenges, the administration plans to make it a national model. Bob Jamerson, A.B. Kelly. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today in the House of Representatives today. Debate begins on a bill aimed at the number one concern of the American public, crime. Well, the bill carries a $15 billion price tag and is meant to help communities hire more police and build more prisons. It also comes with more than 60 amendments, many meant to make a tough bill even tougher. But these are already the object of GOP wrath. A number of Republican-inspired amendments blocked by Democratic leaders will not be debated on the House floor. So some Republicans are promising to gum up the works with disruptive tactics. But even the GOP recognizes the deep concern of the public. The latest CNN Time magazine poll shows 24% of those asked see crime as the main problem facing the country. Unemployment is a distant second. Health care and the economy are third. And now we go around the table with our panel of Washington journalists. Susan Page, White House correspondent for New York Newsday. Susan Densler, chief economics correspondent for U.S. News and World Report. And E.J. Dion, political columnist for the Washington Post. Well, folks, we had... Uh, quite a conversation here over these guns, uh, these assault weapons, also handguns and all the rest. E.J., you've written about crime. You say that this thing threatens to break into the traditional liberal conservative debate. What do you see happening? Next week is Crime Week at the White House. Well, I think one of the things your segment showed is that the worst thing that ever happened at the gun lobby was when the police signed up on the side of gun control because no one can make the case better for gun control than a cop who faces this every day. First, again, what is on the horizon in terms of legislation, because the Congress would like to do something about guns. The Senate crime bill has already passed, among other things, bans the manufacture, transfer, and possession of assault weapons. It bans the sale or transfer of guns to juveniles, and it strengthens federal licensing standards for gun dealers. The Schumer-Bradley bill, among its many provisions, would require that all handgun buyers possess a handgun card and would limit the purchase of uh, handguns to one a month. You know, some folks are saying that this is a good bill, but is it tough enough? Is it? I think it's plenty tough enough. It provides $3 billion for boot camps and for programs for violent offenders in direct grants to state and local government to keep the bad guys in. The American people don't want Congress gumming up the works. They don't want disruptive tactics. I think they want a nonpartisan, thoughtful, common sense approach to crime. I think they want Republicans and Democrats to come together and get it passed. But it also provides for money for 50,000 police officers on the streets of America in community policing programs that are working throughout America. The people understand this, and that's one of the reasons they want the crime bill passed without delay, without disruptive tactics.
the possibility, realizing the dream of the founders of the UN, of having a universal organization using for its, for the universal good. Or universal bad, as some nations worry. We could well have a situation where uh, smaller, weaker states can easily be victimized uh, for extraneous political reasons. The major countries hijack the UN and trying to use the UN as a projection of its own image or value. That would be a mistake. If it tends to erode the national sovereignty, certainly it would be a matter of concern. This is a train station that was purchased by the federal government as, and is being converted over to a very mysterious uh, thing, and we don't know really what to call it. It is definitely for the processing of people, and they are definitely prisoners. These turnstiles are one way. It is being built. Uh, in an old abandoned railroad yard outside of Indianapolis. It's under guard, and you cannot get into it. All the windows are being blocked up. It is zoned off in blue zones, uh, red zones, green zones. This is what uh, Hitler did. Uh, he would categorize, and this is what the MJTF police statement is. It has massive gas uh, lines going into this thing. Uh, experts have taken a look at these pictures and have stated that this is gas. Look at the doors. They're one way, heavily barred. Uh, barred. No one can get out. It's a one-way operation. Now, in view of the Bible, and in view of what the Bible says, we believe this is an extermination center of some type. I don't care what the federal government says. I don't care what the people of Indianapolis say. I don't really care what the contractors that are doing this have to say. I only care what God has to say. And God says that the Americans, uh, the, the good Americans, the Christians are rounded up and either imprisoned or executed. Take a look at that entryway and take a look at the fence around it. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now they have known for a long time they're bringing in this new world order. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. And remember that it says in Daniel, the Antichrist, thinks to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto the Antichrist. They shall deliver you up, said Jesus, to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Something horrible is on its way. And we believe these uh, operations, like what you just saw these pictures of, are the preparations for this killing. Once disarmed, the government can do anything it wants, and it will then directly enslave all the people. Hitler's gun control laws are now being put into place in America under the guise of crime control. It's all a scam. Once Hitler had the guns, the killing machine went into motion.
under the Global 2000 report, there is to be a massive population rollback from 5.7 billion to approximately 2 billion or less. The Global 2000 report uh, was given to President Jimmy Carter, and he agreed uh, and accepted it. There are many books coming out on the market. The war against population. The rich men of the earth don't like population. They want to roll it back. The essential reason they need to roll it back is it's easier to control. James said, remember, we have con condemned and killed the just. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. We will make merciless use of executions with regard to all those who may take up arms against the establishment of our power. We must take no account of the numerous victims who will have to be sacrificed in order to obtain future prosperity. This is the protocols. They openly admit what they're going to do. In order to murder millions of people, there has to be justification. Iron Mountain gives some ideas for the elite. They are called blood games. Blood games is a substitute for war. <laughs> Game theorists have suggested in other contexts the development of blood games for the effective control of individual aggressive impulses. More realistically, such a ritual might be socialized in the manner of the Spanish Inquisition and the less formal witch trials of other periods for the purposes of social purification, state security, or other rationale both acceptable and credible to post-war societies. something acceptable and credible. There is only one way that you can do this. You have to have the means of propaganda, or you cannot convince the masses of the people that what you're about to do is acceptable. So it's called media manipulation. You paint your selected target group as being evil. You hype all media to get the population to approve government action to purify the evil. My friend said, don't take the case. My sister said, don't take the case. Um, uh, you, you, how can you defend a racist? How can you defend this person? But you see, they were the, they were the victims, the victims of demonization that we that we all are victims of. When the federal government decides that it's going to prosecute somebody, they sort of demonize them. Did have views that uh, you and I wouldn't have, and you and I wouldn't believe. Jerry Spence is Randy Weaver's lawyer, but the other side of him is that. Uh, as long as he's free to have those views, you and I can have ours. And when he loses his, we've lost ours. You think he was dangerous in any way? No, he was never dangerous, and everybody knew he wasn't dangerous. He was heavily armed up there. He was prepared to defend his beliefs with weapons if necessary. That does not make him a dangerous man in your judgment. Let me tell you something. Do you see that hole right there? Now, that's a hole that would be occupied by a little rabbit. I've never seen a rabbit that was dangerous. Until you reach your hand into the hole, 
to try to pull the rabbit out and to take its young and to destroy it. And then the rabbit will bite you. That's the kind of danger that Randy Weaver was. They had me convicted in the papers before I was going to go to court. Uh, they called me the white supremacist and all that. And going through the door, there was a bang. It hit her and then hit me. Did you think you were going to die right then? Yeah. And I turned around, and my wife was down on her knees with her head on the floor just inside the door with the baby in underneath her like this. Randy reached down and picked her up, and the baby had blood splattered in her in her hair. I was afraid to look at Vicky because I, I knew she'd been hit. And I, I went down, and I picked she had pretty long, dark hair, and I picked it up away from her face and her head. And uh, I could tell she'd been shot in the face. I couldn't detect any breathing or pulse or anything, and I started to bring her in the house. And I pulled her over side, alongside the kitchen table. And uh, told Sarah to get a blanket, which she did. When federal agents searched the cabin, they found 14 weapons and 4,500 rounds of ammunition. And there wasn't a single, hear me, <laughs> there wasn't a single illegal weapon in Randy Weaver's possession. Well, do, you want to, um, do you want to give your uh, federal agents that um, leeway to just say when they kill American citizens that things just... It just went wrong. We just have a mother here dead. We have a little boy dead, and it just things went wrong. government agents admitted under oath that they had been ordered to kill the Weavers regardless of any threat family members posed to government personnel. What was the charge against Vicki Weaver? What crime against the state had she committed? Indeed, she was not charged with any crime whatsoever, yet the U.S. government ordered her shot on sight. This is murder in the first degree under the Constitution of the United States. But more importantly, it follows the hallmarks of cold-blooded ritualistic social purification. The Weaver case, along with the Branch Davidians, proves we are in the middle of the final battle for the Constitution of the United States. We are in the middle of a severe constitutional crisis. The war has now shifted from a paper and legal war to an overt shooting war. Are these trial runs to test the American people's reaction? If this is true, the reaction of the American people proves to the enemies of our Constitution and our freedoms that we are ready for a complete and total takeover. Korsh and the Branch Davidians were demonized by the national media. They were tried, judged, and executed in a social ritual. The Waco massacre followed all points of ritualized killing. There were a cult, and it was for social purification, and they deserved what they got. Their compound was raided by a federal assault group when in fact there was no evidence of any crime.
Yesterday's action ended in a horrible human tragedy. Mr. Koresh's response to the demands for his surrender by federal agents was to destroy himself and murder the children who were his captives, as well as all the other people who were there who did not survive. He killed those he controlled, and he bears ultimate responsibility for the carnage that ensued. with Summit County law officers. Lawmen were forced to shoot as Singer drew a handgun during their attempt to serve a felony warrant. Charges stem from a previous encounter when Singer resisted arrest by threatening officers with a gun. Vicki, Vicki, why did they let you go? They let me go because they had no right to hold me. I was forced by the court to let an administrator supervise the education of my children in their own home. They have killed my husband, a righteous man, and I shall see justice done. You're filing a wrongful death suit. He was shot in the back. We have the photographs right here. The state, the police, and the church murdered him because of his beliefs. Heidi, you were not allowed to attend public school by your father. Don't you think that you missed a lot on the lot by not going to school with children your own age? My good father believed that the world was our classroom in nature, in hymns, and the writings of Joseph Smith and all the prophets. He and my mother took responsibility for teaching us the path to truth and righteousness. And look what these devils have done to him! It's the situation. Even if we're not sure the kids are being held against their will? That's correct. As long as they're inside, we got a red light on the house. So for now, we evacuate all the neighbors near the farm and seal this joint off. Miller, let's get your guys dug in on the perimeter. Four sides, dig them in. Then we get a tap into their phone line so we can communicate with this guy and let the negotiators do their thing. The swap calls out. I want to have a word with them, all right? And I want to call your wives, fellas. This may take a while. Okay, let's go. Bob, it's important that we deal with this thing very carefully. Get some sort of shrink up here to deal with these people. In the meantime, let's find someone to, to send in there, a friend, family, someone they trust. Commissioner Nielsen, uh, Commissioner Nielsen, uh, has there been communication with them, Commissioner? Uh, just a lot of rambling, religious chit-chat. But nobody wants a confrontation. But we've got a volatile situation that can't be backed away from. Commissioner, does this mean you're prepared?
welcome to the real world.